Every investor should have 0.1 or 10% of a Bitcoin. Let's take a look at what that would look like, what it means. We're also going to take a look at the Bitcoin chart today, as well as the miners. Uh, and let's have a look here. Now, this is not financial advice, nor a suggestion to buy, sell, or hold any assets. A little bit of a thought experiment in relation to Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, uh, we all know Michael Saylor here on this channel. He is the CEO of MicroStrategy. He made a big bet on Bitcoin. It has been going exceptionally well for him and his company. Now there's this video. I'm not going to show the video, but I'm just going to go over the quick summary here. Uh, so Michael Saylor was saying that Bitcoin's going to go to a million dollars. Now that does look potentially uh, within the realm of possibility in the next few years, if not this cycle, certainly four years from now, that is definitely within the cards when you've got companies like BlackRock and Investco and Fidelity all investing in them. And then starting next year, we'll have the central banks for major companies also holding Bitcoin on their balance, uh, their balance sheet. So 0.1 Bitcoin at some point is actually going to be a significant uh, amount of value. I mean, even right now, for most people, it is still currently a significant value at six thousand eight hundred ish dollars. Well, six sixty seven six thousand seven hundred dollars currently, uh, as of the time of this recording. But if Bitcoin is to go to a million dollars, like a lot of people are saying, right? A lot of people are saying it's going to go. Uh, we've got the ETFs. There's tons of inflow, lots of money coming in. Governments are getting involved now. High net worth individuals are seeing the value of Bitcoin as a store of value over gold. We have flipped the silver market cap. Um, using the, the ETFs have led to Bitcoin being worth more than the total market cap of silver, and gold is next. Uh, so, so, I mean, it's gold is still 10 times away from now, but the amount of inflows we're getting is insane. By the time oh, it is getting swallowed up in pensions and 401ks uh, by central banks, it's going to explode in value uh, due to those things. So 0.1 Bitcoin at a million dollars, that's $100,000. And every million after that, we're talking $100,000 per each one. So 200, 000, 2 million, we got $200,000 in, in Bitcoin if you have 0.1 Bitcoin. Uh, if it gets to insane levels, like four or five million, you're, you're looking at nearly half a million dollars just from your $6,700 investment in Bitcoin in you know, 2024. Now, that's not to say go out and run out and buy it right now, because no, uh, this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor, and this is not a suggestion to buy, sell, or hold any asset. But I have personally... I have started to accumulate that 0.1 Bitcoin. I'm like a third of the way there. It's just slowly dollar cost averaging in right now because I do think that a pullback is in order and we have been seeing one going toward the halving right now. So I'm slowly buying a little bit of Bitcoin pretty much every other day right now just for the long-term hold or at least until I see a peak in this market and then I'll sell it and buy it again in the lower part of the crypto winter. Now, with the involvement of these much, much bigger players uh, in this space, there is speculation that the winters are going to be more mild going forward because a lot of this Bitcoin is not going to be getting sold and traded anymore due to it being locked up in the ETFs. And a lot of the selling that we were seeing right now is a lot of old wallets uh, exchanging their Bitcoin in exchange for having the ETF version of it just because it's easier to manage. Uh, so anyways, that's the little spiel for today. Bitcoin, uh, having 0.1 Bitcoin might be a big deal someday, and it could be something to consider taking to uh, account. I mean, even if all we do is get to $200,000 on Bitcoin, uh, one, uh, you know, 10% of a Bitcoin on that, still $20,000. I mean, that's a that's still not an insignificant amount of money, and it is more than double than its current value, right? So let's take a look at Bitcoin. The daily candle right now, we are currently trading under the 15 and the 5. It looks like the 5 SMA wants to curl under the yellow 15 here, which would be bad for us. We would see some movement down closer towards this 50 SMA at 55. Now, that's not saying we're going to go to 55. We'll probably get somewhere around like 61, 60 and hang out between 60 and 70 for a while before we see a big move after the halving. Let's take a look. Last time we got a crossing of the five over 
the 15 SMA was back here on January 14th. And on that day, we went up a little bit first, but we went from 43,000 all the way down to 38,000. So we saw a good $5,000 dip last time we got a cross of the five over the 15. And now that hasn't quite happened yet because I don't have my little arrow yet, but I am expecting that to print either today or tomorrow unless we get a turnaround. Now I am seeing on lower time frames here. Let's do the hourly. Do I want to do the hourly? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. On the hourly, there is this downward descending channel. Honestly, it starts about right here, goes through here. There are some outliers, but we're looking at about eh, somewhere like this. Right here, we had that big outlier with the double bottom brought us back in again. We are in this downward channel. Once this, usually channel slanting downward like this, want to break to the upside. If it were slanting upward, like back here from March 14th until the 15th on this hourly chart, see how it's slanting upward? Uh, and then it broke to the downside. Usually when you see a slanting channel like ascending or descending, it, it'll want to break in the opposite direction. So right now we're on a descending channel and I'm expecting that at some point to break to the top here and then come back up and take us back into 70,000 from there. Can't say when that's going to be. This does look a little bit like an inverse head and shoulder. You can see the shoulder here on March 14th. Shoulder, got a head on the on March 16th, and we're starting to form the other shoulder right now. And if we curl back up and above this descending channel here around 68,000, if we get up and above that, that'll start to confirm the inverse head and shoulders, which if it were to confirm would actually take us back to the all time high again up at the $73,000 mark. So keep that in mind when we're looking at this chart. Um, some charts uh, look like it could potentially be bearish, other chart sh charts are showing the potential for a move back up to the all-time high on the smaller time frames. doesn't mean it's going to play out. It does need to confirm to the upside before I would say that that's going to happen. It could absolutely also break through the support that it's currently on and then take us even lower into the low 60s and high 50s. So that's something to look into on Bitcoin right now and just be aware we are getting some downward pressure on the daily chart, but in lower time frames, it looks like it's starting to build up some momentum to back to the upside. We could be looking at a simple 50 retracement on the RSI, which is where we currently are. We're at 48, but we're close. So we went from overbought down to the 50 on the RSI. We actually went all the way down to 39.40 and came back up into the 50. And if we get back above 50 and hold that for a day or two, I'd say that that was a 50 retracement on the RSI. And that would take us honestly, back up to the all-time high mark here in the $73,000 mark once that starts to play out. But again, we are under the 5 and the 15 SMA, so those aren't great places to be price-wise. So I would be leaning more towards watching uh, price to move flat or even fall a little bit from where it is before seeing it to curl back up again. But I do like that price went up and away from the 5 and the 15 and and then came crashing down the last couple of days, collided with the five and the 15, and then it started slowing down. Like if we look at the volume bars, the volume bars have been dropping dramatically. Today is a bit higher than the last two days, but if we see volume continue to drop here, I, I would be much more confident in this upward move versus this downward move. But right now, volume is a bit higher than it has been the last two days, and the candle is red. So I am leaning a little bit towards potentially a little more of a dip, maybe into 66 to 65,000, and then we start curling back up again from there. That's what I'll be looking for on that chart specifically. Let's look at the miners now. Mara was actually up half a percent today. Let me get this out of the way so I can read it a little better. Oop. All right. Mara was up half a percent today. That's actually quite promising. We closed slightly above the body of, yeah, of Friday's candle at 1932. We're at 1943 in the post market. We closed at 1941. We did slightly go above 20 for a little bit today before getting slammed back down, but I'm not too concerned about that actually. Volume is still falling as we're going up, but I think that means that we're probably going to go sideways a little bit more than up or down for a bit, at least until Honestly, until after the FOMC meeting on Wednesday, which is something to really remember is happening. Um, it's was it 2 p.m. 2 2 p.m. or 2:30 p.m. 2 p.m. is when the 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 rate decision comes out. 2:30 is when JPOW does the press release. So that's going to be an absolutely wild time and one to keep on your calendar to either stay away from or watch very closely if you decide to try to trade it. Um, 
We are in bear territory on the RSI on the daily. We're on 36. Uh, we are currently around resistance and a little support, which would be all the way down about 1750, which we hit on yesterday, on Friday and Thursday's candles. Uh, today we are moving up a little bit. I really would like to see a gap up tomorrow above, like open above 20 and hold above 20. That would give me a lot of confidence in an upward move on Mara. But right now this with this doji that printed today and weak volume, I am looking more for like a sideways move on Mara right now. So let's move on to clean spark. Similar kind of thing. We got lowering volume, just like on Mara. Volume's falling still. We got a slight green candle. We closed almost flush with Friday's candle here at 1747 in the aftermarket, though we are up just a little bit, touching the 15 SMA. We are in between the 5 and the 15 SMA on clean spark right now. We are seeing a Bollinger Band Keltner channel squeeze at the top of the chart here. You can see it with the plus signs. Um, let me see where we are in relation to the Bollinger Band to give me a thought. Okay, so we're still in the middle. Just like we were on Friday, we're smack dab in the middle. This thing can go any direction right now. I mean, honestly, we could go all the way up to 20 or we could come right back down to 15 on this thing. Uh, that's really indecisive. This is a super indecisive candle we're looking at right now. Um, so honestly, it's kind of a sit and wait with Clean Spark at the moment. There's not really anything to look at here. We're just waiting for this formation to either decide to go up or end up being um, a head and shoulders that we are showing from past here. It'd be a really ugly right shoulder, but you know, it could form it here if it decides to go back down. So this is kind of anyone's game right now. It's like a coin flip at the moment on Clean Sparks chart. Riot was actually down today by 1.47%. We closed the day out just a little bit below Friday's candle. Friday's candle was 1161. Today's candle closed at 1143. So that's not great. That wasn't fantastic, but it was falling on lowering volume. We got this super flat doji candle here uh, today. RSI is at the 35 rate. Let's look at a smaller time frame. See if there's anything to give us any hints as to what Riot is trying to do here. So there's a flag. All right, great. We got a flag. That's actually not the worst thing I've ever seen. So we have right here, we got a little flag from Riot right there. And actually, if you follow the 50 and the 15 SMA here, it's actually forming uh, a bit of a wedge here. So this could be good, especially since RSI is at like the 50 level here. It's not at 50, it's actually at 48, but it's near that level and price is kind of wanting to curl up. We've got um, wicks on the bottom larger than on the top. And all we've got between us and going higher is the 50 SMA for the hourly chart at 1167. So if tomorrow we could open up above 1167, and move on upward again from there, like move up from there. Uh, honestly, 1220 to 1250 is totally in the cards for tomorrow if that were the case. So that is actually a pretty bullish little chart. It also looks like it's trying to print a little inverse head and shoulders here. You can see the left shoulder there uh, formed this morning. And then a little later this morning, we got the head. And right now we're on this, this shoulder. And if we get above, let's go about right here. If we can get above, if we can get, yeah, it's the 50, S, the 50 SMA on the hourly. If we can get above that 1150 mark, this is going to be looking like an inverse head and shoulders. And if that plays out, the end of that head and shoulders, that inverse head and shoulders is actually at about $13. That could take us up to $13 if we get the momentum for it. And the RSI on the hourly is honestly indicating that we do potentially have the momentum for it, the pattern forming right now. Here on the hourly chart is also kind of indicating that we might have the momentum for it with this flag forming with that inverse head and shoulders behind it and a clear path up to 1325 where we would hit resistance here on these tweezers from the past uh which was on friday so riot could potentially do a nice big move up on uh tomorrow and early on in tomorrow's trading day it might bleed off into the end of the day afterwards but that's not so bad now the daily candle doesn't look great, doesn't look great, but I wouldn't be surprised if that were to happen in terms of Riot going up, uh, especially since the other miners are up today and Riot was down. Uh, it might be building up some of that liquidity, some of that momentum to make a move up. Bit Digital, what is Bit Digital doing? It is still hanging out on that megaphone line down here, just, just chilling right on the bottom of it. 
I don't like that whatsoever, but it is on support. So the fact that it's hanging out on support and, and it's touching the support so much since uh, March 6th, it touched it one, two, three, four, five times without breaking it. That scares me. It makes me feel like every time it touches the support, it weakens it. And every time it weakens it, it gives it a chance to get through it. And it did twice, it didn't close under it, but it got under it twice. Uh, if it were to get under it a third time, I'm not super confident that it won't break. And if it does break, we're going down to $2 or less on Bit Digital. Now, if it holds, we're going to shoot up probably to the 200 at $3 or near $3 pretty quickly. But it's not looking super good. Now, I'm not going to um, say all is bad because since we're closer to support than resistance, if we were to go up, we would go up significantly further than we would go down at this point. So the risk reward is kind of there, especially since the pressure from this squeeze ended up being down and that's already gone. As you can see from the top of the chart here, there's no more plus signs there. Uh, so and the lowest, I really see it going is like 195, maybe 190. Uh, if it really, really falls down 150, but on the upside, it could go up to upwards of, you know, 70, 80 cents before hitting any r real strong resistance when it decides to move its way up. Let's take a look at Bitfarms. Bitfarms also had a bad day, negative 1.33% uh, today. Again, it's also like a doji candle. Can't really decide where it wants to go. RSI is just hanging out around the 30s like it has been doing since March 5th. It's not really going up or down. Volume is decreasing quite a lot on this one. And today was a low, low volume day. We are getting a bottom signal on the VIX fix. And I honestly, I think once this yellow line here, which is the 15, crosses beneath the orange line, which is the 50, and we get a red dot like we got here on January 31st, I think that's when we might bleed a little bit further down, tap $2. And then once that's happened, after that red circle has printed, I think we'll start seeing upward momentum in BitFarms again, if not a sideways action for about a month before moving back up again in April, late April or um, early early May before you know the sell and man go away starts to occur uh, just like it's done in other cycles. Now that's cyclical. It doesn't mean it'll happen, but it's, you know, it's a seasonal thing. Uh, so that is the update for today. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a profitable day.